Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today on Comics from the Future. In case you don't know, this is our show we do every single Friday where we're going to preview what's coming out in the wide world of comics. I'm going to show you some new series beginnings, some cool covers, and other things we don't want you to miss. In case you don't know, my name is Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yes, we have a brick and mortar here, in case you don't know. And please, before we begin the video today, make uh, take a second and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It takes one little second, and we're growing every day. Make sure to leave us a comment and do all that fun stuff. We are also on Instagram and whatnot as well. We're doing two whatnot shows tonight, so... It's going to be crazy, and it's a really big week this week. Before we jump into it, um, as you've probably noticed, the past two weeks have been very light on DC, so this week is definitely making up for it because next Monday is Juneteenth, and because of that, the, basically there is two DC weeks here in a row. Mm -hmm. So it's a yep. very DC-heavy week, so make sure to pay attention. Don't get anything lost from DC. But that means next week there'll be no DC order. <laughs> right. so they're, they're having us order all the stuff for two weeks this mm -hmm. week. So. Yeah. So let's start with our feature comics, beginning with Batman. So this is not a new number one or anything, but this is Batman issue 125. And this is going to kick off uh, Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez's new run on Batman. He's taking over from Joshua Williamson, who took over for James Tynan. But this seems like this is going to be going for a while with this team. I'm very excited about this. Um, one, I loved uh, Jimenez's art and uh, Zdarsky. Everything he writes is great. But I actually got to preview this issue, and this is super cool. So the story um, is going to be a great jumping on point. It's uh, Batman is, or Bruce Wayne, is being kind of haunted by dark dreams of the future. All the while, there is someone out in Gotham killing billionaires, which, I mean, does not look good for uh, Bruce Wayne, being he's the top of that pile. Um, but it is also really cool because, as you can see on the cover, that is Robin. But which Robin? You do get some Batman and Robin team up in this issue. That's uh, really nice to see, but maybe not the Robin you're thinking of. And also, since I got to preview it, throw in there, there's a pretty uh, shocking thing that happens with a member of the Bat family. But you have to read it to find out, but I feel like people are going to be talking about it. So, super cool. Love this A cover for this. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So, somebody's killing billionaires. Does Bruce have his money back? Because I thought he lost a lot of his money. Like, pretty much all of it. Like Joker, That's a like, good question. All. Um... In the recent Batman stuff I've been reading, they still have it where he doesn't really have the money. So, I mean, he would still care if billionaires were getting killed. Yeah. I don't know if he'll be targeted. Maybe billionaires and previous billionaires or something. <laughs> okay. Billionaire by proxy. Yeah, yeah they're, they're reading, like, last year's news on who billionaires are. I know were. at least he goes to a pretty fancy-looking party in this mm -hmm. that I would imagine either he's retroactively invited because of who he is or whatever, but he's still in the mix of uh, the elite of Gotham. I see. So this is our A cover. We have a Jim Lee cover. Really cool. We have the Del Otto variant. We have the Inyuk Lee variant. We have the Matina. We have the uh, Demio acetate cover. So I'm guessing you pull this one back and those bats making the Batman face probably on the acetate part. Right, reveal the rest yeah. of the cover. Right? That's cool. We have a blank cover for sketchins. And this is cool. So this is not the actual cover, but this is called the Failsafe Protocol variant, which uh, I believe we are getting introduced to a new villain called Failsafe. And this is going to be maybe the first cover debut of his character design and all of that. So that's going to be super cool. There's also, I believe in this issue, a backup story um, about Catwoman. So we get kind of a, the A and the B story in this as well. 
You know, seeing these covers reminds me. I, I did read one additional thing. I read the acetate cover, the DeMeo one, is going to be a week later than the other covers. Okay. And when that happens, us retailers tend to not order as many. Mm -hmm. So that's when you're going to want to let your retailer know you want for sure. But expect that's coming a week later because it's just more to the process yeah. of it. Um, so I think that and this cover we're showing here, which I bet will have failsafe on it, mm -hmm. will be the, the hot ones. Yes, for sure. All right, so next up from Marvel is Eve of Judgment, Avengers, X-Men, Eternals. So if you look at the solicitations, they're, they're taking the first letters. It's saying Axe, Avengers, X-Men, Eternals, mm -hmm. A-V, or A-X-E. <laughs> Spelling's can't, hard. can't spell, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, in this, the Eternals have learned that the X-Men of Krakoa have found a way around death. You know, anyone who's read any X-Men books or kept it but all know that there are five X-Men who can bring people back to life. And they've done it numerous times and give them back all their memories. So once the Eternals have discovered this, they don't like that. To them, that's a deviation. Mm -hmm. So this is going to begin a new war between the Eternals and the X-Men. And the Avengers are going to get caught up in the middle. So this is sort of the precursor leading into it. So that's why they call it Judgment Number 1. And this is going to be by Kieran Gillen, who's been writing the Eternal series up until this point, with art by Pasquale Ferry. So here is the, this is the A cover. Then here is the Garcin variant. Garcin is just always like, I'm going to show off how I do that <laughs> yeah. style. And just, it's, it's really cool. And then here is the Witter variant. And lastly, we have the Vernick variant. All right, speaking of axes, or letters that come to form <laughs> axes, this is a one-shot for Barbaric. This is actually going to be the first of a few different Barbaric one-shots that are going to be coming out before the second arc of Barbaric begins in July. second arc is going to be called Axe to Grind. So yes, if you did not uh, read the first Barbaric series, it's basically about a barbarian named Owen who is forced to do good. That good ends up being very bloody. And so it is quite violent, and but it's humorous as well. The axe can actually talk. It has a mouth, so it's really fun to see. But yeah, it should be pretty interesting. Like I said, the first of a few one-shots that will be coming out this summer before the new series begins. This is cover A, and then we have the Richard Pace cover B. Yeah, and Barbaric was a pretty big hit. It was. They had the black bag covers, uh -huh. and they did a lot. You see that evil axe laughing down mm -hmm, at the down bottom. Down at the, of the bottom. Page. <laughs> yeah, it's he's very funny. Okay, next up is a pretty cool one. <clears throat> this is Black Adam Justice Society Files, uh, colon Hawkman. <laughs> so they're going to actually be doing um, a few of these. So that's why the the had to include the colon. So not all these are going to be Hawkman. Um, a uh, personal thing with this, this is written by Kavan Scott, who I've been working with on Star Wars, so that's super cool. Um, but I previewed this issue as well. I'm very excited about this, so this is going to be kind of our first tie-in with the Black Adam movie. And uh, this is uh, this one, Spotlighting Hawkman, is about... Hawkman used to be the leader of the Justice Society, but, uh, you know, Justice Society is kind of the older team. So now, what is he doing with his life... Uh, kind of post being a team member, um, but he is now being haunted by his past and by a certain gentleman ghost, one of the classic Hawkman villains, uh, but it's cool to see it in the kind of cinematic version of Gentleman Ghost. Plus, there's going to be a backup story by Brian Q. Miller, who I don't think we've seen write in comics for a little while, that's going to be... Um, looking at the early days of Black Adam in Kandak way back then. So really cool. It's cool because there is uh, some other Justice Society characters that show up in this that you may not expect. So if you're excited about the movie and you want to kind of figure out what kind of world does this one take place in, this is going to be a great one for that. This is our A cover, and then there is a photo B cover. All right, so Daredevil is getting relaunched with a new number one, but it's still Chip Zdarsky and the same creative team. <laughs> so if you, if you love the old Daredevil series, they're continuing on. You know, why a new number one? I mean, a lot went down in that Daredevil series that led all the way up to Devil's Reign, 
and it just seems like they they've decided okay this is a new era like Matt mm-hmm. Murdock's in a new headspace considering what Wil- Wilson Fisk did to somebody very close to him just in case you know some of you haven't quite got up to mm-hmm. that point I won't say the whole thing but uh, because of that he uh, he left Hell's Kitchen well he can't stay away forever I mean th- things are gonna bring him back. And that's where we're going to begin this new Daredevil series. So same creative team, new number one. Now, if your store is like ours, there's almost no system that takes the number one you're on and puts you on the next number one. Uh, now, we have great employees. They're smart. They, they move everyone. But if you don't shop with us, you may want to tell your store, hey, make sure to get me on that new Daredevil number one if you were enjoying that past series. So, of course, this is our A cover. Then here is the Fornas <laughs> through the blinds variant. Here is the Peach Momoko variant. The Nakayama variant. Spy- Spider Devil or whatever he's going to be called. Yeah, I like that the form-fitting armor. It's yeah. really cool. And here is the Panosian variant. Alright, next up is Promethe 1313. This is from a blaze and it was written by Andy Diggle who wrote on Hellblazer and the Losers with art from Sean Martinborough and Jock. I'm not sure how much Jock will be doing this, but he did the cover A here for this one. So, probably some covers. This is a psychological sci-fi horror alien conspiracy story. So it's basically about our main character. She was abducted by aliens um, as a kid and now has apocalyptic visions of the future. Um, And it's hard to tell what's real versus what's not going to happen. There are conspiracy cults in this society. And this is also a prequel to Christoph Beck's best-selling graphic novel series. Um, have you, either of you read those? Mm-mm. Yeah, it, it seemed that that was mostly available digitally. So I don't think a lot of people, uh, well, it says it's best-selling. So a lot of people have apparently <laughs> read this. But anyway, it sounds like it could easily stand alone or like it is a prequel to that series. So maybe a chance to check out something new. I like alien conspiracy horror stories. <laughs> sounds pretty cool. So this is the cover A from Jock. Definitely got some good talent on it. This is the Sorrentino B cover. And then we have the parody cover. This is, uh, was that 2001 A Space oh, Odyssey? A, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of movie covers this week, as you guys will see. <laughs> I think more of like an homage than a parody. They call it a parody on oh, here. Okay. Well, but yeah, one um, of them has a funny mustache or something. <laughs> Groucho Marx glasses. <laughs> yeah, Diggle and Jock, they work together on The Losers. Mm-hmm. So I think Diggle was just like, come on, man. Come on, boy. We, we came up together. <laughs> okay, next is uh, our first of the one-shot tie-ins to Dark Crisis. This is Dark Crisis World Without Superman. So they're going to be doing quite a few of these, as you can imagine. World Without uh, Wonder Woman. World Without, I think, Green Lantern. I think there's four or five of them. Um but this one is actually written by Tom King and art by Chris Burnham. Uh, and this explores, which I think is super interesting. So, quote unquote, Superman died in Justice League 75 along with the rest of the Justice League. Um, and this is a tale. Uh, I feel like it's actually going to be something else, maybe really going on, but in another reality or something with Superman, where uh, it's kind of Superman's. Uh, dream that never happened and it's very interesting because it is uh, about Clark um, with Jonathan the missing years so Jonathan Kent aged up very rapidly uh, when he went off to space and everything and so Clark missed out on those years of Jonathan growing up it says uh, you know he missed the pain and joy of seeing your boy grow up and this is what if that didn't happen, and how would he have raised him? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a very interesting idea, and maybe shows a little bit of regret that Clark has for missing that time with Jonathan, and maybe some kind of disconnect he has with him as well. So this is our first of those one-shots, plus there is a backup story. I think that's kind of, kind of how they're covering all of the Justice League, because this one will have a world without... Um, Justice League Aquaman backup story by Brandon Thomas. So very cool. And I like it's just a one shot. It's not three issues. It's not five mm-hmm. issues. Just a one shot um, by Tom King. Why, so. why do you think Robin is on the cover with him? I think that's what Jonathan would have become is a mm-hmm. Superman's Robin. I, I get that too, but why is he dressed like Robin? 
Uh, they thought maybe he thought Damien had a cool costume yeah. or something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I, I think you know that would probably be most fathers' feelings would be you know regret and missing a large yeah. chunk of your of your child growing up. You know, of course, he was off with the Legion of Superheroes, which is pretty cool reason. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's a there's a lot going on here, and I feel like Tom King is a good person mm-hmm. to delve into the emotional bits of that, and just the one cover, mm-hmm. if you can imagine that. Okay, so this is Starhenge, Dragon, and Boar. This is going to be a six-issue miniseries by writer and artist Liam Sharp. He's doing it, he's doing it all. Wow. Yeah. So listen to the premise for this. This is about a time-traveling Merlin from the future. Okay? He goes back to Arthurian times to stop monstrous killer robots who want to rob the universe of magic. And that's me summarizing a much larger (laughs) solicitation. Yeah, but what makes it unique? (laughs) (laughs) So it doesn't sound like this Merlin is from Arthurian time. It seems like, you know, maybe that's how he got into the myths, is that he's actually a time traveler, but also a magician. (laughs) And he goes back to the Arthurian times to stop them, these killer monstrous robots. Mm from stealing magic in the world. So that, that's the premise. Sounds wild. So if you like Liam Sharp stuff, you're probably going to like this one. We got quite a bit of covers for this. So here is the Sharp variant cover. Then we have the Weston variant cover. Which you talk about future and Arthurian, but here's like a modern day I, I football player. <laughs> it's obviously more time traveling is going to be involved yeah. in this because, yeah, that's straight out of our time. And then here is the Ben Templesmith variant. There's the Ward variant. The Brown variant. The McCormick Sharp variant. And the Perkins variant. Looks like there's a lot more characters and things going on than even the solicitation gave us. Yeah, I, yeah for sure. And I mean, there was so much in it, I think they had to trim it down to the <laughs> paragraph it was. I mean, this is like one of these comics. If you want a lot of variants that are strong, here it is. Yeah. If you're a kid and your mom says, hey, you can only have one comic, be like, let it be this one, mom, but I get all the covers. You're going to end up with a nice little stack there. Okay, so next up, we're going to do other number ones. These are just um, ones that we didn't feature, but they might be even more your cup of tea. Okay, this is interesting. Follows what DC has been doing, these little mini collections. They did it with Dark Knights of Steel, though with the one through three. It can be good if you just happen to like the artwork of, of these covers, or if you missed out on the first three or the last three issues of a series. So this is DC vs. Vampires. This collects um, one through three, and as you can see, that is a Lost Boys yeah. homage. I love that these are just five ninety nine as well, so uh, we know the second story arc's about to start again, so maybe you missed all of them, but anyway, Lost Boys homage cover uh, collects one through three. This is the Coffin edition, by the way. <laughs> And then next we have the DC vs. Vampires Crypt edition. This collects issues 4 through 6. I do think it's interesting they didn't choose a horror movie. They instead chose The Breakfast Club. I was about to say, it's Breakfast Club. (laughs) Yeah, that's a Breakfast Club cover. Breakfast of blood. (laughs) (laughs) So, still really cool. But anyway, um, yeah, these are neat little pickups for $5.99. Okay, next up is a one-shot, which, uh, for a one-shot, this... Sounds like a pretty rich story. So this is called Disciple. And it's about in the future a legendary Kung Fu master dies under mysterious circumstances. And then during his funeral, his uh, training facility is ransacked. And his um, legendary teachings and things he has there and secrets are stolen. Now it's up to his former students to hunt these down and retrieve all these artifacts and ancient teachings and and moves and everything so uh it sounds like wow that's a lot to pack into a one shot this sounds like a mini series but super cool i love the kung fu futuristic kung fu uh idea in this and we have a couple of covers for this which i don't know how they relate but they're very interesting so this is the dominic variant it's a little um is it the robot from Metropolis mm, or whatever? That, that like, like chrome that. one? It does look mm-hmm. like that. And then we have the other Dominic variant. Okay, so from the Millar, Millar universe, uh, Mark Millar is doing a second volume of Prodigies. This is called Prodigy the Icarus Society. 
So Edison Crane, the main character of Prodigy, he is the smartest man in the world. Well, in this, he's getting targeted by a bunch of other geniuses, a society of geniuses who call themselves the Icarus Society. So that's generally what this is about. Of course, all of Mark Millar's stuff has been a first look optioned by Netflix. So that's another reason if you're collecting for that reason, you might want to pick this one up. So we got four covers on this. This is the regular cover. Then we have the black and white version. Then we have the Sinkovich variant. And lastly, a blank sketch variant. Okay, this is G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Best of Snake Eyes. He's a ninja soldier, arguably the most recognizable member of G.I. Joe, but also the most mysterious. So this is 100 pages of ninja action is these uh, Best of series have been. So pretty cool. Check it out if you love Snake Eyes. Okay, next up is Savage Tales, bringing back the, uh, the classic pulp magazine idea of Savage Tales. This time just for a one-shot, <clears throat> but I think it's still very interesting and the reason why they're doing it. So this is from Dynamite, features four tales, says of brutality, thrills, and spills. So as you can see on the cover, um, we're going to get one of the stories. It's going to be a Vampirella story. We're also getting a Red Sonia story, you know, kind of your... your uh, figureheads, your, your Superman and Batman of the Dynamite universe. We are also getting an Alan Quartermain story, which I don't think they've done anything with him um, in a while or ever, I'm not sure, where Alan Quartermain, uh, the legendary hunter, stalks a Cthulhu cult, which sounds super cool. And there's a Captain Gulliver story uh, that's set after his adventures on Mars. So they're definitely pulling in the uh, very pulp magazine idea. But also, this is... Uh, a showcase for two new artists from the Qbert School. So it's kind of like DC has done their thing, their uh, showcase books. This is kind of their showcase for some new artists um, coming from the Qbert School and in like the citation and everything, it talks about what is the Qbert School and uh, alumni of there and everything. So I think this is also kind of a Qbert School sponsored um, book that I think is gonna be really cool. So we have a few covers for this. This is the Sudium A cover. We have the Sharp variant, the uh, Canaan variant, and there is a white blank sketch cover and a red blank <laughs> sketch cover. So okay. You know, the Pat last thing I've heard with Alan Quartermain would be League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and yeah. they just lately, in the last month or so, said that they're doing another, I don't know if it's a movie or TV series, so I almost bet that sparked interest. Yeah. Like, let's get our character. I love those classic there. literary pulp characters, Yeah, and I, I wish Dynamite would do more with, you know, the whole run of them, so that's really cool. They're trying that one out. Okay, so next up from AWA... Upshot is a new comic called Absolution. I like this cover, but I like covers that look like movie posters. Yeah. And that's how it looks like. <laughs> so check out the uh, what, what this is about. So Nina Ryan was a killer for hire. And as you can tell, this is set sort of in the future. And in this future, um, she's going through a sort of futuristic rehab where they give her a month to prove that she has done everything in her power to make up for her past to a live stream audience. And if she can't prove it in a month, a bomb that's implanted in her goes off. Mm. So sort of like a Suicide Squad meets meets rehab, Black, but Black a, li Mirror. a live yeah. stream audience gets to decide your fate. I, it sounds good to me. And uh, it's written by Peter Milligan, who you know, he definitely knows how, how to write. And uh, the art is done by Mike Diodata. So it sounds like a pretty interesting premise. Mm -hmm. Good cover. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling when this one comes in, I'll be grabbing that aside to, to review. And uh, this is the Diodata main cover. And then we have a Cho variant cover. Doing kind of the same kind of covers he was doing on Wonder Woman back with those like uh, ballpoint pen statues in the background. Yeah, and Harley for, yeah. for a bit. All right, so this is Entropy, number one. It's going to be a six-part series from the Heavy Metal universe. Um, this is going to be, they made it sound like it's going to be an event series. 
So I, I think, I don't know if there will be tie-ins with this uh, series outside of the one through six, or if it's if it's just all contained here. But anyway, uh, this is the origin uh, story of Heavy Metal's ultimate supervillain. I described him as Green Lantern meets Breaking Bad. So, I think that's a pretty great pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Green Lantern meets... making meth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 100 okay. percent so anyway <laughs> Say just, no more. just one cover heavy metal fans or breaking bad green lantern fans maybe you might dig this all right so next up we're going to get to cool covers and other comics that is going to be issue number twos and threes of ongoing series maybe you read the issue number one you need to be reminded to tell your store to to put the rest on order and we're also going to just show you some awesome variants for ongoing series now starting with dark crisis number two um dark crisis number one just came out I went ahead and kind of breezed through Dark Crisis number two. This is really cool. As you can see on the cover, this does deal with the big attack from Deathstroke against the Titan's Tower. And it's kind of now up to Nightwing uh, to stand in Deathstroke's way to stop any more destruction. Very cool. There's some pretty uh, surprising appearances from characters, but also uh, if you've got a really strong hero that comes in, it seems like Deathstroke has a, uh, a, a counter move for that because he has some pretty big hitters on his team. I thought it was really cool. Plus, um, Hal Jordan, now that he's back in the picture, it looks like he has a, a pretty big plan to take the Justice League's place and stop what's going on. So it was a very cool issue, especially if you're a big Nightwing fan. He's got some great moments in this. So this is our A cover. This uh, is the NECA variant. And we have the Sarmento Homage variant. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Issue 200 or something. I First think. meeting of Justice League and Justice Society. Yep. Yeah, we have that in our case right now. <laughs> really brag. <laughs> <laughs> Explain a brag. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is issue number three of Flashpoint Beyond. In this one, what is Project Superman? In fact, what exactly is going on with Superman and Krypton and Kryptonians in this Flashpoint universe? Well, they're going to get into that in this issue. Is he the same sort of person that we know, or is he completely different? Will he be a help to Thomas Wayne, or will he be a hindrance or a villain? We're going to find out. And here is the Zermanico variant for that same issue. And next up we have Jurassic League number three. I feel like some people are just finding out about this because we've at least had some excited customers hunting for the first two issues. So anyway, this is Justice League, but they're dinosaurs. So how fun is that? You need fun comics. They exist for a reason. So six part miniseries. We're right in the middle of it here. This is the cover A from artist Daniel Warren Johnson. And then we have the Duarte <laughs> cover B. <laughs> I like if at the end of this, it's all just Dark Side playing with toys, and that's what the whole story has <laughs> be been. Wonderful. Okay, next up is issue two of Aquaman and Flash Void Song. So I actually talked about issue one of this when y'all were out of town. Mm. So uh, I, I did a lot of reading up on this. So this is very interesting because there's this thing called the Void Song. It's kind of alien related, and it basically wipes out all the heroes on Earth, except for Aquaman and Flash. Aquaman can't hear it because he's so deep in the ocean, and Flash can't hear it because he was in the Speed Force. So they are the last two heroes left that have to team up to take on this kind of alien menace. And in this issue, they are going to confront whatever is making this Void song at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, sounds really cool. It's cool teaming up these two characters that talks about that don't really work together just by themselves too often. Um, this is our A cover. This is only going to be a three-issue miniseries, and this is issue two, so halfway through it. And then we have the uh, Georgiev variant. Yeah, you are right that you just don't see these two characters alone together. Mm -hmm. They're on so many teams. They're together with other people around, yeah. but it's like, who are they just by themselves, mm -hmm. like, hanging out? Okay, so this is issue number two of Multiversity Teen Justice. This, of course, is the team with uh, Kid Quick. And um, they are going to be investigating the Church of Blood in this issue. This is a six-issue miniseries. 
And then we have the Stephanie Hans variant for the same issue. Then we have Miss Meow at number two. Number one just dropped this week, and this is a six-part miniseries. Uh, it's from Merck Publishing, and it's basically a new superhero universe featuring Miss Meow, and they're doing these really cool magazine-style covers for this. This is the cover A from Jamie Tyndall. We sold out of that really fast. Yeah. Oh, and another cover as well. This is the Hal Lauren variant. Okay, next up we have Nubia, Queen of the Amazons, number two of this miniseries. And after the first issue where her introduction to Man's World did not go too great, uh, Nubia is now fighting for her life. So we've got the A cover for this, and then we have the Clark variant. Okay, here is the main cover to Poison Ivy, number two, her miniseries, where she is trying to kill off humanity. That is the basic premise of it. If you read the first issue, that she makes her intent very clear. In fact, she kills a few people, some of which are just innocents, in the first issue. Pretty, pretty shocking. She's gone totally back to villain. Um, but, you know, the fun is following her, seeing why she's doing that. In this issue, it says, I like this solicitation because it's like, uh, on her way to destroy humanity, Poison Ivy gets hungry. So she stops at a diner where she meets a roadside poet who tries to talk her out of it. You know, I mean, it's going to have to be somebody who has a lot of thought and feeling mixed to be able to talk Ivy out of doing, you know, what she wants to do. And uh, will this person be successful or not? Who knows? But also the police show up. So good, good luck to them trying to stop Poison Ivy. So this is your regular cover. Here is the Jenny Frizen variant. It's a great Frizen. Then we have the Row variant. And lastly, the Christian Ward variant. Some really good. People were dying to draw Poison Ivy, yeah. you can tell. Okay, next from James Tinian is Closet Number Two. This is only a three part series, so don't be surprised. Uh, this is issue number two. They are oversized slightly, at least they definitely feel that way. Um, anyway, in this, the family continues their cross country move and. The young boy, Jamie, finds he is still uh, chased by creatures from his nightmares. So, uh, definitely for fans of Something is Killing the Children or just James Tynion in general. So, don't miss it. If you somehow miss the number one, this will be here and gone. Next up is Twig number three. Uh, this is only a five-part miniseries, and I feel like uh, even after that, we're not. that's not the end of Twig. This feels like a universe that's so rich we can keep exploring it issue three twig and splat run into a group of hunters called trappers uh i think you might see one of those on one of the variant covers so this is the a cover for that i love this so creepy looking uh this is the scotty young cover and then we have the momoko variant I quite enjoy Twig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is the Christian Ward variant to Batman Beyond near Neo Year number four. So previously, Terry McGinnis was sort of warned that Neo Gotham does not need a Batman. In fact, uh, they kind of let him off, said don't come back. Well, he's been back. He's been doing his thing. And now the Neo Gotham super soldiers are after him in this issue. So that's what's going on in issue number four. And again, this is the Ward variant for that. Christian Ward got like a new uh, a new <laughs> editor or something that's helping him out because he's on like he five or six things this things. week. Yeah, he's been busy. This is Batman Urban Legends number 17. And normally we wouldn't feature something like this so deep in the series, but this seemed pretty cool. So Batman Ur Urban Legends, this issue is going to feature three different stories. And it says it's celebrating the Dark Knight's monumental year on the silver screen. So pretty interesting. We see a host of different characters that will be likely featured here as well. Black Adam, Flash, Aquaman. So could be pretty cool. And there's a bunch of different covers for it, as there usually are. This is cover A. And the cover B, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that. Milk Knob. Uh, cover C, this is the Fiumara variant. And then the Gary Frank. That's a name I can pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Frank. Did you have something you were thinking about? No, it's about just, this I was one? just saying it's interesting that, you know, all these characters are ones that have movies coming up mm -hmm. Flash, uh, Aquaman, Black Adam. 
and of course Batman just had his movie so I'll be very interested to see how they kind of tie them in together uh, yeah. film and comic definitely all pretty buff dudes I guess Flash <laughs> is pretty lean lean yeah he's got some killer thighs <laughs> uh, this is DC versus vampires number seven and like Megan talked about earlier, this is the beginning of the second story arc. So this is the very creepy Matina variant. All right, here is the Salvador LaRocca variant. I am Batman number 11. So uh, continuing off from what happened at the end of issue number 10, uh, Jace and his team are just, his, his task force rather, are just sort of upended. So once again, this is the La Roca variant. I am Batman number 11. And this is Joker number 15. Joker originally was supposed to end at number 14, so this is just sort of an additional final issue for the series as James Tanyan is leaving it to pursue other stories. So number 15 will be the final Joker story, uh, issue, although we're pretty sure there's going to be something else coming down the road. It's not exactly been said what. So this is the cover A. Then we have the Ruin cover B, really cool snow globe for your June comics, and then the Brian Boland cover C. He's even <laughs> up, he's upgraded with an he's iPhone upgraded now. Upgraded his smile camera. Yep, that's so <laughs> creepy, that's but cool. also makes me want to laugh somewhat. Okay, next up we have Superman, Son of Kal El, number thirteen. And what is special about this? This is the DCU debut of Dreamer. So, Dreamer had previously been in, of course, the Arrowverse on TV, and also the Arrowverse uh, comics they recently did, um, where she had an appearance. But this is the first time in the main DC continuity. So, very cool for that. This is our A cover. And then we have our Kaplan variant. Okay, this is the Liam Sharp variant for Wonder Woman Evolution number eight, which is the last issue. This is the final issue of Wonder Woman Evolution. And in this, uh, Diana goes up against a new DC Universe villain who is able to rewrite history mm -hmm. um, when you're choosing Wonder Woman villains for this series because she's so godlike. They've got to have some big powers. So the ability to rewrite history. It's a very Linda Carter Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. too. And this is Captain Carter, number four of the five-part miniseries. We wanted to show you this Rami Jones variant for issue number four. And speaking of captains, Captain Marvel. This is the Valion Spider-Man variant. And we have the Terry Dodson variant. All right, here is the Dodderman variant for Fantastic Four, number 45. So this is the Reckoning Wars epilogue. It's over um, by the time this issue comes out, and this is going to show you where all the pieces fall. So again, the Dodderman variant for Fantastic Four, issue 45. Hellfire Gala, and he right. is looking sharp. He, <laughs> in, indeed, yes. Speaking of Hellfire Gala, this is Immortal X-Men number four. A few different covers here to show you, but in this, Emma Frost is trying to protect her baby, a.k.a. the Hellfire Gala. So this is the Mark Brooks, if you can't tell, cover A for this. I think this. that was originally also supposed to be a variant. And they're like, just make it the A yeah, cover. Yeah, they made it the A cover, really good. and good on them for doing that. Then we have the Cola Pride Month variant, the Hetrick Hellfire Gala variant, and then the Noto Quiet Council variant. That one's very intense. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we have the Pride Month variant for Marauders number four featuring Dokken. Here is the Gist variant, Moon Knight mm -hmm. number 13. So even though uh, Moon Knight and his team, they're still uh, healing their wounds from battling Zodiac, Moon Knight goes out, he picks a new fight. <laughs> That's right, he goes right out, he picks a fight. He's going to be fighting a bunch of vampires now, which is something he is not at all new to. So once again, this is the Gist variant, Moon Knight number 13. And we wanted to show you the Savage Avengers number 3 and Dolpho Predator variant. So yeah, we're continuing to get our Predator variants. I want to see these happen. I want to see yeah. these battles go on. They're such a tease. <laughs> okay, then we have Spider-Man 2099 Exodus number four. Uh, this is the Lashley frame variant. And in this issue, it's Black Widow 2099 versus Hawkeye 2099 round one. So super cool. 
This is our frame cover, and then we have our Ron Lim connecting variant. Okay, so here's the Kyle Hotz variant to Wolverine number 23. So this one sounds pretty interesting because Wolverine, whether he likes it or not, he's had to uh, be hanging out with Deadpool lately. And the two of them end up, for certain reasons, back at Xavier's Institute for Gifted Youngsters. We have not seen that place Is it in even a long still around? Time. Exactly, because everyone moved to Kokoa. So anyway, him and Deadpool end up back at the mansion where they're haunted by a lot of memories of things that have happened in the past. And I'm sure, I mean, how many jokes do you think Deadpool's going to make about what's mm -hmm. in the manor and what happened behind the scenes mm -hmm. and such? I mean, i got to check this issue out. So again, this is the Kyle Hotz variant for Wolverine number 23. It's the Predator variant. Oh, yeah. It's a, that, that, that has to be a, uh, a comic, is Wolverine versus Predator. Oh, yeah. That's just, that writes itself. <laughs> I know, you yeah. don't need Schwarzenegger and a whole team, <laughs> you just need one Wolverine. <laughs> Okay, this is the variant cover for Little Monsters number five, the cover B. I couldn't I tell exactly what comic this is, but obviously a golden age. Uh, it's almost cartoony. like I think hot stuff and books like that used to do those little like character yeah. headshots down the side. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. So very cute. Oh, and then we have Spawn issue three thirty one. I uh, always just like showing off these Spawn covers because they're always like just so extreme. So this is the uh, Berins A cover. This, see, this is why you never say that expression to Spawn, still my beating heart, because he will do it. He will rip in your chest, pull it out, and that, it, it, that's the end of it. And then we have the Barbary variant. Okay, so this is the Fleeks variant to Dynamite Never Dies number five. This, of course, is another movie poster homage let's let's quiz megan megan i heard you guys talk about oh, you, already heard. <laughs> you would have known probably <laughs> it's freddie versus jason yep. wonderful movie very mm -hmm. fun yep. and now we're going to get to other printings and graphic novels starting with avengers forever number six second printing yes people are still looking for this on our shelves we, i'm proud to say we had it for the first weekend <laughs> but anyway this was the first appearance of vibranium man aka star panther which was t'challa from a future where he never became black panther so avengers forever number six second printing then we have punisher number three second printing this was a very interesting disturbing issue where you see Punisher's first kill, Frank Castle's first kill. Um, this has been a crazy Punisher series. I'm interested to see where it goes, but if you missed it, here is the second printing of that issue. Another printing is Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer number one is going back to third print. So of course they started a new Frazetta universe with Death Dealer being the first comic they're releasing so far. And this is a new cover by Carlos Valenzuela. It's a pretty cool cover. And this is finally Batman 89, collected in hardcover. It'll be issues one through six. This is, of course, the Gotham of Tim Burton's Batman movies. And it's written by the original screenwriter, who is here to tie up some loose ends, answer some questions. Only going to be $25. I love that. And since the series has had some delays and things like that, it will be nice for a lot of people to uh, get this hardcover finally. So check it out. Then, this is interesting. So this is Batman vs. Robin Road to War. Um, this is a trade paperback. It's going to be $16.99. And this is actually, they're collecting some issues that are going to be leading in to a big Damian Wayne story that's coming uh, later this year that I believe it's... Batman vs. Robin um, is going to be the name of it. This collects Teen Titans 43 and 44 and Detective Comics 1031 through 1033 plus two backup stories from, an, I believe, an issue of Batman and another Detective Comics issue. All right, so Deathstroke Inc. is having its first hardcover volume one called King of the Supervillains. It's going to be $29.99, um, pretty standard price for mm -hmm. a hardcover. Is going to collect Deathstroke Inc. number one through six, plus Batman Urban Legends number six, with that, which had a really good Deathstroke story mm -hmm. in it as well. So that is what this is. It's a great series. So this is Harley Quinn, 30 Years of the Maid of Mischief. I find it hard to believe it's it's been only 30 years. I don't think any new character has made the mark that new character Harley has. Um, but certainly she is very important to the DC Universe, so this is going to include 12 stories, including her origin, 
and some brand new 30th anniversary special. Various artists and writers on this. It will be $50 and it will be super cool. Then we have uh, Kamundi Trade Paperback Volume 1. If you are not familiar with Kamundi, he is a Jack Kirby created, really cool character, the last boy on Earth. Uh, it's kind of a little Planet of the Apes, uh, but instead of apes, there's all kinds of animal people, but Kamundi is the last kind of human left, and this collects issues 1 through 20 for $39.99. Then DC is also releasing a new Teen Titans Omnibus hardcover volume one. This is going to be a hundred dollars, but uh, this is the Teen Titans as written by Marv Wolfman. With a lot of the art was George Perez. There there are some other artists that worked on some of this too, but Perez does a lot of the art for it. It's going to include, of course, the new Teen Titans first appearance back in DC Presents twenty six. It's going to have new Teen Titans one through twenty. And then a bunch of other appearances, one-shots. There's, there's like a Raven story annual, several other things. It's 692 pages for that $100. And then we have Robin and Batman. Uh -huh. did, you, did you expect to be talking about this? No, I was just looking down. I was like, <laughs> oh, wait. I kind of thought I was. but <laughs> uh, This is going to be a $25 hardcover again. This is the story of young Dick Grayson, newly orphaned, struggling to find his way. Issues one through three. Somebody was just looking for these back issues the yeah. other day. I'm glad the trade's coming out. It is, of course, written by Powerhouse, Jeff Lemire, and Dustin Nguyen on the artwork. Really pretty stuff. So check it out if you missed it. Yeah, it's really cool, especially you're, you see Dick Grayson's first interaction, like coming into the Teen Titans and how, like, do they accept him? All the other... Um, sidekicks and everything highly recommend this one then we have devil's reign trade paperback this one is mine i, I, <laughs> I won't steal it I, okay thank you <laughs> uh devil's reign uh trade paperback for 34.99 this is the kind of big end story to uh chip Zdarsky's daredevil uh, but also kind of a lead into this new one that we talked about earlier. So if you haven't read it, I do think this you can read this without reading all the previous ones. Um, very good story. And this collects all of it, all the miniseries and everything. So really cool for $39.99. $34.99, excuse me. <laughs> King Conan is also getting a trade paperback. This is going to be $17.99. It's going to collect the entire series which is just a six issue series is written by jason aaron with art by mohammed azrar which one thing that's cool about this is this actually goes further into conan um conan's future as king than anything previously written that's in canon mm -hmm. all the way up to a final battle with toth mm -hmm. so if you want to see like as far out as the conan mythology goes this is actually it in any form mm. past books movies everything shows so just uh 17.99 for the full trade paperback and this is the Secret Wars Omnibus. Yes, the original Secret Wars is being collected again in this really nice collection. It includes Secret Wars 1 through 12 and more. It's only $75. It's got some extra stuff in there, as I said. Um, so really nice. Um, all about Learn all about the Beyonder. This is the, I guess, Alex Ross. Is that mm -hmm. Alex Ross? Uh, direct market variant. It just said Ross on here. Uh, and then the Zek new printing of... The original. <laughs> uh, once again, just $75. Then we have Stray Dogs Dog Days is being collected. This was the two-issue series. Um, there was kind of a follow-up to the to the dog, uh, Stray Dogs miniseries, kind of figure out stories about the other dogs. Plus, this has the free comic book day Stray Dog story in it, all for $16.99. All right, and that's our show for this week. Once again, a very heavy DC week because there will not be any DC on next week's show. There is no FOC for it because of the holiday. So make sure that you get all your DC orders in if you are a DC fan. Um, but we will see you next time. Same time, same place. If you have not already checked out Jason and Andy's review show that they do every Monday. They review all the new comics that release every week. So make sure to check that out. Give it a like. And we will see you guys next week.